like the beauty of all this at DeFi farming thing is you can you can print the reward out of thin air. All these DEXs are actually right now serving the purpose of a permissionless uh, like slot machine. It is not about privacy. It is about uh, it is actually about the viability of you as an individual, like in a specific economy. Changely is a suite of products and services that enables customers to have a one-stop shop experience when engaging with crypto. Changely acts as an intermediary between exchanges and retail users, offering over 160 cryptocurrencies that can be effortlessly swapped within 10 minutes on mobile or desktop. In 2020, Changely branched out to accommodate the needs of traders with Changely Pro. Pro is an easy-to-use platform that enables retail buying and selling of digital tokens and coins. Piggybacking the great support system found in Changely, Changely Pro will provide simplicity, effective pricing, fast execution, and 24-7 live support. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another Cointelegraph interview. My name is Jackson. I will be your host and journalist for today. I am pleased to welcome Dovey Wan, who is a founding partner of Primitive, Venture, Primitive Ventures, which is a blockchain investment firm. How are you doing today, Dovey? Hey, Jackson. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm, I'm doing excellent. Thank you for asking. Um, so I'm really excited to uh, get a read on what's going on in crypto in China uh, through talking to you. And I have a few questions about um, farming, which I, is something new to me. And I'm curious to hear how you, how you explain that. I understand that you're not talking about actual agricultural farming. This is something specific to the crypto space farming or DeFi farming. So could you please just yeah. explain a bit um, what you're talking about there? Farming in Chinese is lu yang mao. Uh, means that shearing the sheep. Uh, basically, you just yeah. So just I think about right. And so it's a very similar. So it's a very similar. Like if you think from like conceptual perspective, uh, basically like the whole idea is uh, like the whole idea is, and I can spend close to zero capital. Like just like like so I can spend so I can spend close to zero down payment, and 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 then I can also get something in return as a reward for free. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so like farming in the crypto term means um, liquidity mining or um, or just like so when it comes to so when it comes to liquidity mining and this is also like very familiar to many Chinese crypto player uh, because like back in 2018 so like back in 2018 liquidity farming was a pretty big thing for all the centralized exchanges like especially all these like chinese exchanges um like afcoin is the one that first started this liquidity or just a like, transfer mining program yeah so if you think about the mining behavior like mining means like you want to invest something like it can be your effort it can be energy like bitcoin um it can be your um so it can be your capital right so like any like proof of stake so any proof of stake is kind of like so it's kind of like mining or like farming and so the farming in DeFi context um uh, is very interesting is uh when it comes to DeFi, i usually stake or just locking the liquidity of something that has a consensus value it can be DAI, it can be stable coin it can be eth or like it can be like wrap BTC. So something that has a consensus value that can be used as a collateral. And then with that, I can yield another currency, usually is the platform token uh, offered by all this farm, right? So like this farm can be a asset management platform like Compound, like, uh, like Avi. So I think at the end of the day, like, like the fundamental of all this mining, farming, whatever, like incentive program are the same. It's just growth hacking techniques, right? Um, like the beauty of all this at DeFi farming thing is you can you can print the reward out of thin air. Mm -hmm. And you've mentioned like the 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 upsides of uh, engaging in this strategy so far. Are there any risks that um, that I should be aware of if I was to involve myself in this? There's a lot of risk. Um, so like if you are not familiar of how all this DeFi, like especially how this, um, like especially for how this the liquidity pool is actually designed, and there's a very high chance that you might get wrecked. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and then also like 
like a very simple example because I try to use it. So I try to use the analogy that uh, many of these DEXs like Uniswap and like AirSwap, etc., and they are uh, in a good way, they're like a permissionless vending machine, right? Because the inventory is transparent and like the price is also relatively uh, so it's also real, so it's also relatively known as well. So it is not like a so it is not like a, so it's not like so it's not like the traditional exchanges, which is like a black box. Uh, but the flip side of it is uh, all these DEXs are actually right now serving the purpose of a permissionless uh, like slot machine. Uh, so you have no idea whether like the coin list there is so is so is like the team behind it is legit or not. And because like any, so it's that like anybody can list a coin there and like how the Uniswap, this uh, automated market making engine is designed as um, like anybody can inject like, like whatever coin supply there. And so if you're on the other side of the market and you can easily be just like eaten off. Cointelegraph recently published an article um, reporting on a chain news report, which says that hundreds of companies in China are now hiring blockchain specialists and the average monthly salary of blockchain related jobs has more than doubled since last year. Uh, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts as to why you think that Chinese companies are now putting um, so much more value in blockchain related positions. So when it comes to blockchain, not Bitcoin, or like blockchain, not native crypto, like I said, it's just, so like blockchain is a database management technology, right? And so if you think about consortium chain or 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 like things like Hyperledger, like offered by uh, IBM. So so it is nothing different than than a end-to-end -end encrypted append-only database. Um, so most of the companies are hiring like blockchain experts for that purpose. Like definitely not for native crypto development, right? Mm -hmm. uh, any native crypto thing here in China, I would say is in gray area. Like if you want to issue your own token, that's definitely illegal because like, no one can issue personal private currency here. It might be a good bandwagon for many of these companies to just jump onto. And I know uh, many public companies here in China, so they just want to hype about blockchain and just to pump the stock price. And, and that's very common. Uh, Cointelegraph reported very recently that state-run banks in China have now begun testing the digital wallet for China's digital yuan. Um, and I'm, I'm curious to hear your um, overall opinion on the, the, the digital yuan. Obviously, in the crypto space, this is very hyped up, maybe overhyped, as you were alluding to previously, that uh, maybe blockchain and crypto in China is a little bit over um, emphasized by the crypto space. But what, what are your thoughts on, on the digital yuan uh, now that it's nearing a further stage of completion? Yep, yep. Um, so I wrote an article, I think last year or like 2018. Um, so on the whole, the digital yuan, like before it has its, so before it has its official name as like DCEP, but there's like a clear distinction between uh, digital fiat currency and the digitization of fiat currency. Um, so here in China, like fiat currency or yuan or what's, and whatsoever has been highly digitized and the whole society is capitalized, right? And mm -hmm. you don't have to use cash and you just bring your phone and not even any credit card. And so, and so every, the, all the transactions are down on WeChat or Alipay. So that is the digitization of currency. Mm -hmm. And um, so digital yuan and the digital fiat uh, is actually M0. So we have the like M0 that's issued by the central bank or like, or, or so all by the Fed, right? And on, so on top of like M0, so that's the, so that is the base currency. On top of, so on top of like M0, we have like M1 and, and um, M1, and so M1, M2, and that's usually uh, issued by the commercial bank, right? Uh, or probably shadow banking. So the digital yuan, what, so what makes very unique is because it's M0 directly, like which means that it can make the central banker much more powerful and then they can have better control and direct impact when it comes to monetary supply and also monetary policy. Um, like say for instance right now, so if we think about the current um, 
So like the like under the current like economic situation, the Federal Reserve have to quote unquote print money, but they don't actually airdrop money, right? So they have to they have to do all this like QE and buyback and just all this uh, overnight operation Apple and, market, and so yeah. right. So so it is not directly inject demand to supply to the market. But like when it comes to digital yuan and it's actually digital M0 and which is like, if you think about the potential of it, like it can be insane. Uh, which means it will actually, first of all, the central banker now can bypass all the commercial bank, right? Mm. Uh, and they have the full transparency when it comes to how the money is actually moving, like within the, so within, the, so within its economy uh, and and then they can also make the monetary policy programmable. Uh, uh, I can give you a very like simplified example. Uh, here in China, we always facing this situation that okay, housing market is overheated, like stock market is overheated, uh, and and like this and that sector is overheated, right? So previously, what the so like what the central bank has been doing is okay. I try to talk with that. Uh, so I try to talk with a specific financial agent or or like or specific financial proxy in that specific sector, and then make some new regulation and then try to suppress the overheated situation over there. But given this digital yuan, and I can simply write a line of code saying, okay, 10 billion RMB is not going to flow into housing market that easy right think about that so i think the biggest potential of digital yuan is from this um highly flexible and highly pro so highly flexible and highly uh uh and then uh highly digitized monetary policy design and uh which can make the central bank uh like in the center of the so in the cent so in the center of this uh, whole economic planning uh, because right now the central banker is just indirectly mm -hmm. uh, influenced the whole economic planning, but in the future they can just roll it all. Awesome, thanks for that. And you were, you were talking a bit how it would let the um, the the bank monitor the money supply and uh, really uh, trace it. And a lot of people are, um, I think, concerned about how about this ability of the bank to track the money do you think this is a um a valid concern are, are people's privacy at risk can the go can the bank really see where exactly that money is moving um yeah so i think it's definitely a valid concern and um, but the thing is that like, it is a valid concern but it's not a new concern mm -hmm. uh when we are using our credit card right so i have my i have my sapphire here right so when we're using this credit card and like all the issuer and network processor and they all have our, you know, like financial footprint. Um, so it's nothing different than that. And it's just, I think comparing with the credit card transaction is just uh, your financial like data is actually holding by multiple parties and versus here is holding by PBOC, right? So mm -hmm. it's holding by the central bank. To be honest, and I have higher confidence for my data to be held by the central banker, other than any uh, financial conglomerates, uh, because like central banker, they still have to serve the public, right? Um, uh, they don't have a specific financial mandate because like, they are the ultimate last lender of resort or like last buyer of so or or, or like the last buyer of resort, like last resort, last. Like, buyer of the last resort. Yeah. yeah, like buyer of the last resort, right? So the, like they don't have a strong uh, economic incentive like to sell off your data. Like there's just, it's, so, so it basically, it's, so it's like nothing to them, right? Um, so I think a, uh, so like, so like the actual concern I have is um, when one party have all my financial data and especially the party is a, um, so if one party, so if only one party have all my financial data, and then that is, so that becomes the single point of truth, right? Mm -hmm. Like single point of truth can also lead to single point of failure. Mm -hmm. Like say for instance, um, if I, so like they can easily just erase you from economic assistance. 
So that is my ultimate concern. It is not about privacy. It is about uh, it is actually about the viability of you as an individual, like mm. in a specific economy, right? Um, so if we think about a very 1984 scenario, um, so uh, PBOC or like any central banker can can easily get so can easily get rid of you, uh, like just removing you from that so from that economy uh, by just shutting off all your financial like like inbound right yeah. um, so that's possible so so like when they have all your data uh, when they become the single point of truth and then they can easily alter to so to make you just like non existence um, so that is my ultimate concern. And so I think that's why I'm very into the actual vision of Satoshi, like not the one from the Australian, uh, like, but the actual Satoshi that um, we need to have something that uh, is, it has good enough redundancy that can be good enough. So that can be robust enough uh, that will never fall into this uh, single point of failures. Uh, so they will never fall into this uh, single point of failure uh, mm -hmm. situation. Thank you for all of that, Davi. Um, you're you're just so ingrained in crypto. Like you you probably, you breathe crypto. It's just it's it's so amazing to to yeah. hear all of these uh, all of these concepts explained, all of these dynamics delved into. So I, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, to talk to me today. Yeah, sure, Jackson. Anytime. Thank you everyone for watching. That was W1, who is a founding partner of blockchain investment firm Primitive Ventures. My name is Jackson, and if you enjoyed the show, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel so you can get more awesome crypto content. Cointelegraph, like, subscribe, and hodl.